Hey there folks and welcome to this video. This one here is talking about F1's We Race Swan display ahead of the Hungarian Grand Prix. For those of you who are unaware of what this is, because I know some broadcasters hide it, it started off last year as a sort of end race of display. It was arranged by the Grand Prix Drivers Association to be done before the National Anthem. And then F1 worked it in as a proper end race. It's a message from the British Grand Prix of last season after um, some kinds of issues at the second and third rounds of steering Grand Prix where it was headed for the World Feed and the Hungarian Grand Prix in this place last season where uh, there was this kind of disorganised mess of it. The F1 decided, yeah, we'll integrate it in with a 20-something seconds of do whatever you feel is right. So typically drivers kneel. Well, I say typically. Last year it was initially 14 to 6, then 13 to 7. Um, this year it's about half and half as to if a driver's going to kneel or if they don't. And that's where we are today. But it's now part of a wider e racism one message where end racism is one of the parts of it. Other parts of it include, for example, uh, sustainability. So you can see here, I was working at the British Grand Prix. This, um, as I've just looked over the shelf, this pass was made from recycled bottles. So that, so that um, is part of their sustainability message. There's also a thing of diversity and inclusion as well. But the thing is, the the kind of end racism of it still has so many issues attached to it. I mean, just this week we've seen a Red Bull employee um, or former employee now be exposed for allegations of racism, including use of the N-word, which... With that being allegations of racism, and seeing that Christian Williams is that person no longer employed by Red Bull, it's absolutely horrible. And then considering the kind of war of words between Red Bull and Mercedes, after the British Grand Prix, and seeing the absolutely horrible race to abuse that Lewis Hamilton got. It's... I don't... I don't want to argue that Red Bull as a team is stoking this, because it's not. But it could do more to fan the flames. It could do more to fight against it. I mean... Just look at Helmut Marco and come on to resurfacing about him talk about Yuki Tsunoda. That's a man in a senior position who is seemingly untouchable. Goes on to say these kinds of things, and I know part of it is at the, at, at the point where it's, oh, Marco does what Marco does, but... The, if there was any kind of sense of proper like justice, he would have seen disciplinary action, or he would have heard something. Because he's got a long, long trail of saying things that are these kinds of problems. I just want to end off by talking about where F1 is this weekend, Hungary. Because Lewis Hamilton's matched better with both coming to the paddock with uh, queer positive messages. So messages supporting the LGBT plus community. So Master Vettel with the rainbows on his shoes. Lewis Hamilton with his social media. Which led to him drawing the ire of the Hungarian government, who are passing massively homophobic laws. And that's without talking about all the other problems of the Orban government. Um, racism, anti-immigration, anti-refugees. It's absolutely unforgivable. And this is one of the other conversations we have, like... The Hungarian Grand Prix, as a race and as a track, Hungara Ring is pretty cool. It's got a reputation for being um, on a go without the walls. I think it's the longest running single venue on the calendar. Maybe with exception to Monza and Silverstone. But I'm pretty sure when it started running, we had British Grand Prix at Brands. So uh, I could be wrong. But the situation there politically is so horrible. It's almost akin to Erdogan in Turkey. 
that F1, if it's to consider the We Raises One message, the one that it says that it supports, why are we still racing there? That's my question. Why are we still racing in places like Hungary, in places like Turkey, in places like, well, Sochi, because we can't call it the Russian Grand Prix this year because of the water ruling? Shouldn't F1 properly undertake a review? Especially when we've got new races in Saudi Arabia coming in and rumours of going to Qatar as well. I mean, those are my thoughts. And on that note, thank you for watching.